Okay, beautiful. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome in. My name is Matt Sizemore. I'm the morning anchor for Good Morning Idaho on KIVI Channel 6. And it's my pleasure to welcome you today to the Southwest Idaho Regional Spelling Bee. Welcome in, everyone. Uh, today's bee will showcase the talents of the brightest students from various Southwest Idaho counties vying for the title of Southwest Idaho Regional Spelling Bee Champion and the honor of competing at the 2023 Scripps National Spelling Bee. Let's give it up for them. And right now, let's please welcome Vice President for Research and Economic Development, Dr. Nancy Glenn. Good morning. Can you hear this? It's got a little bit of a, a little scratchiness to this, but um, hopefully you can hear this okay. Good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to see you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you, students. You all are amazing and brave and awesome, so thank you. So I have a few words that I wanted to share um, with you all today. Uh, my name is Nancy Glenn. I'm the Vice President for Research and Economic Development here at Boise State. And um, what research and economic development is, is providing education and opportunities uh, for students to engage in hands-on learning, experiential learning and research. So it's such an honor uh, to be here uh, with you today as we gather for this exciting event, the Scripps 2023 Southwest Idaho Spelling Bee. <clears throat> as we all know, spelling is an important aspect of our effective communication, and this competition challenges us to showcase our spelling prowess, even us adults in the room, because as the words are shared, we're thinking in our minds, how do you spell that? <laughs> So to all the student participants, I want to commend you for your hard work and dedication in preparing for this competition and arriving here uh, today. Your commitment to learning the words, new words for many of you, for all of us, <laughs> and perfecting your spelling skills is truly admirable. I encourage you to give it your all, but relax just a little bit and also have fun with this. I'd like to express my gratitude for the parents and teachers bringing over 30 schools here today to compete. Thank you so much. Let's give it a round. And thank you to the judges and volunteers. This is um, a, a, a time in which there's a lot of focus and attention and um, very precise uh, a focus that's needed and um, also a little bit stressful for the, for the judges and volunteers. So thank you so much. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Robin, give a wave there. Robin from our office in the Division of Research and Economic Development. She's done all the behind scenes uh, logistics and time and effort to put all of this together today. So let's give a shout out to the, the students that are the parents and the teachers and the volunteers, judges and Robin. Thank you. And I just have to, you know, give a little bit of a commercial about Boise State since we're gathered here today. So um, as we gather here, I'll take a moment to say that Boise State is an incredible place to be a student. Think about it. Um, as well as an employee. Um, as you probably heard, we have a blue turf and we like to use the term blue turf thinking um, to how we approach challenges in our everyday lives. We uh, focus on innovation and interdisciplinary work and working in teams all across campus, whether that's in the classroom, whether it's outside of the classroom, whether it's in our workplace, um, in the offices, um, helping students in the cafeteria, wherever that is. Boise State awards uh, the majority of uh, bachelor's degrees amongst all the four-year institutions combined um, in the state. We also have the largest graduate school. And what that means is, is that there's so many opportunities for students and employees to really have a diverse um, uh, opportunity to learn um, and to be uh, and to learn amongst um, amongst their peers. So I hope you'll consider Boise State in the future. So back to the spelling bee, to all the spellers, I say this, you are already champions. You have put in an amazing amount of hard work and dedication to get here, and that in itself is a great accomplishment. Whatever the outcome of today's competition, you should be proud of yourself for taking on this challenge and for using language to connect with others. So important for uh, today's world. 
So without further ado, let us begin the spelling bee with the power of the words and the beauty of the language guiding us. Good luck, everybody. Dr. Glenn, thank you. I wore my Boise State colors today. You may have noticed. Uh, so the competition will begin in just a few minutes. Now at this time though, all competitors should be in position as they are for the start of the competition. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to introduce the officials who will preside over this morning's competition. Uh, first, please introduce our pronouncer, Dr. Tim Thornis, Professor of Linguistics at Boise State University. And next meet Barbara Smith, Faculty in Literacy, Language and Culture. And our scorekeeper, Jana LaRosa, director of the Center for Research and Creative Activity. All right, officials, thank you so much. Now, the format for the competition today will be a traditional spell down. That is, each of the spellers you see here will receive one word per round. The regional spelling bee is a bridge between the school spelling bee and the, uh, the Scripps National spelling bee. Uh, success in today's spelling bee is, in the beginning, all about what you've memorized, but in the end will likely be about the words that you probably have not studied. Sorry, kids. When your moment arrives, just do like the pros do in DC. Just slow down, ask questions, think positively, and you'll be ready to meet the challenge. And before we begin, I'd like to spend a moment talking about my best friend here, the microphone. Spellers, the microphone is important because it assists you in ensuring that the judges hear your spelling. When it's your turn to spell, just approach the microphone, uh, adjust it, which is easier than I made it look. Uh, so uh, make sure you get it to your height so everybody can hear you nicely and you'll have volunteers uh, helping you out with that as well. Now, before you begin to spell, say the word you are given into the microphone for the judges. That will give the judges an opportunity to confirm that you understand the word. And when you're ready to begin spelling your word, remember, just take a deep breath, enunciate each letter very carefully, and speak directly into the microphone. All right. So on behalf of Boise State University, thank you all for joining us here to celebrate the achievements of these fantastic young spellers. We are now ready to begin round one of the Southwest Idaho Regional Spelling Bee. For this first round only, spellers, please approach the microphone and introduce yourself to the officials and the audience by sharing your name and what school you attend. Spellers, I would like to remind you of what will happen in the event you misspell during this round. I will ring a bell, sounds like this. Then Tim will provide the correct spelling and you'll go to meet your parent. We have volunteers to assist you getting down the stage. Um, if this happens, we encourage you to find a seat in the audience and stay for the rest of the competition. At this time, I would like to remind everyone to silence their cell phones. Spellers, take a deep breath. You're gonna be great. Speller number one, please approach the microphone and introduce yourself. Good morning, my name is Abigail Marcona. I'm representing Victory Middle School. Thank you, Abigail. Okay, and your first word is sodden. Can you please repeat it? Sodden. Sodden? Yes, that's correct. Can I have the definition, please? Yes, um, it's an adjective that means heavy with moisture or water, soaked, sodden. Can I have the country of origin, please? This word is originally English. Can you please use a sentence? Sure, after getting caught in a rainstorm, Tom hung his sodden clothes in the shower to drip dry. Sodden. Can I have the definition one more time, please? Heavy with moisture or water. Soaked. Sodden. S-O-D-D-E-N. Sodden. That is correct. <laughs> Speller number two, Layla.
Hi. <coughs> Hi, my name is Layla Shramik, and I go to Andrusel, Cecil D. Andrews Elementary. Great. Your word is dowdy. Dowdy. D O W D Y. Dowdy. That is correct. Hi, my name is June Niederhauser, and I go to Eagle Middle. Okay, your word is Hawaiian. Hawaiian. H A W A I I. A N Hawaiian. That is correct. <laughs> Speller number four, Tatiana, are you here? My name is Tatiana. I go to Chief Joseph. Elementary um, School of the Arts. And your word is sedentary. Repeat it, please. Sedentary. Sedentary? That's Could I get good. a definition, please? Sure. It's an adjective char meaning characterized by or requiring sitting or slight activity. Sedentary. Sedentary. S E N I N T A R Y. S E N I N T A R Y. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is S E D E N T A R Y, sedentary. Speller number five, Matthew. My name is Matthew Myman, and I go to Amity Elementary. And your word is endure. Endure, E-N-D-U-R-E, -E, endure. That is correct. Speller number seven, Van. Hello, my name is Van Kessler, and I'm representing Roosevelt Elementary. Your word is spectral. S spectral. Can I please have a definition? Yes, it's an adjective meaning of, like, or relating to a disembodied spirit apparition or ghost, ghostly. Spectral, S-P-E-C-T-R-A-L, spectral. That is correct. Thank you. Speller eight, Eliana. Hi, my name is Eliana Castro, and I go to South Hills Middle School. And your word is locavore. Locavore. L-O-C-A-V-O-R-E. Locavore. That is correct. My name is Magazini Kumara Guru, and I'm from Forge International School. And your word is 
consequent. Consequent? Yes, consequent. Can I have the definition, please? Yes, it's an adjective meaning following especially as a result or effect, resultant, consequent. Consequent. C-O-N-S-E-Q-U-E-N-T. Consequent. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 10, Luke. Hello, my name is Luke Lovin from the Cambridge Elementary School. And your word is cleave. Uh, can you repeat it, please? Cleave. Cleave? Yes. Cleave, C L E A V E. Cleave. That is correct. My name is Brielle Harvey, and I am representing Basin Elementary. And your word is essential. Can you repeat that, please? Essential. Essential. E-S-E-N-T-I-A-L. Essential. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L, essential. Um, I'm Angela Ding for White Pine Elementary. Okay, this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Shoot. Shoot. May I have it's, the definition, please? Yes. Uh, um, it's a noun. That means an, unif an artificial or natural inclined plane, sloping channel, or par partially or completely covered passage as a trough or framework down through which substances or bodies, as water, coal, ore, grain, or logs, may pass or slide, usually to a lower level. A slide. Shoot. Shoot. C-H-U-T-E. Shoot. That is correct. Scarlet? My name is Scarlett Mashburn and I attend Valley View Elementary. And your word is anime. May I please have the definition? Yes, it's a noun meaning a style of motion picture made with a series of drawings or computer graphics originating in Japan that is characterized by stark, colorful graphics depicting vibrant characters, usually drawn with large eyes in action-filled plots often with fantastic or futuristic themes. Anime. A N I oh. oh Anime. A N I M E. That is correct. Spellers, please say the word before you begin spelling it for us. That helps us a lot. Thank you. Um, Morgan, are you ready? I am Morgan, and I go to Stricker Elementary. This word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Condemn. It's a verb meaning to pronounce as ill-advised, 
reprehensible, wrong, or evil, typically after definitive judgment and without reservation or mitigation. Condemn. Could you please use the word in a sentence? Sure. Often custom justifies an action that years later it will condemn. Condemn. C O N D E M N. Condemn. That is correct. DeAndre, are you ready? My name is DeAndre Millian, and I go to Hillsdale Elementary. And your word is squeamish. Can you please use that in a sentence? Sure. Murray, in accounting, gets squeamish, not at the sight of blood, but of red ink. Squeamish. S Q U E A M I S H. Squeamish. That is correct. Okay. Eli, speller 17. My name is Eli Thurston, and I'm representing Monroe Elementary School. And your word is standee. Standee. S T A N D E E. Standee. That is correct. <laughs> Molly? My name is Molly O'Brien. I am representing Cole Valley Christian School. And your word is manacle. Could you please use it in a sentence? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Davidson used pretty fabric and Velcro fasteners to fashion a manacle that would, that would help keep her toddler from wandering away from her at the theme park. Could I manacle. Please, okay. Can I please have the definition? Sure. It's a noun. And it means a shackle for the hand or wrist, handcuff, manacle. Could I please have the origin? Originally from Latin, this word went through French before becoming English. Could I please have the definition one more time? Sure. It means a shackle for the hand or wrist, handcuff. Could I, you please repeat the word? Yes. Um, Manacle. Manacle. M A N I A C A L. Manacle. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Manacle. M A N A C L E. Thank you. Ms. Thistle, I am representing Pierce Park Elementary School. Okay, this word has a homonym and could be confused with another word. The word is carriage. It's a noun for a horse-drawn vehicle designed for private use and for comfort or elegance. Carriage. Carriage. C-A-R-R-I-A-G-E. Carriage. That is correct. My name is Molly Hannon, and I represent Mountain View Elementary. OK, your word is heredity. Heredity? Yes, heredity. 
Can you put that in a definition? Sure. It's a noun, and it means the sum of the qualities and potentialities of an individual that are genetically derived from its ancestors. Heredity. Can you, can you use that in a sentence? Yes. Fiona thanks heredity for her naturally bright red hair. Heredity. P E R E T R Y. Um, P E R E T Y. Could you uh, repeat the word for me, please? Heredity. Okay. Um, listen carefully. Heredity. Heredity. H e r e t y. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is H E R E D I T Y. Christopher? Can you introduce yourself and tell us what school you're from? Uh, my name is Christopher Irwin, and I'm representing Collister Elementary School. This word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Terrarium. Can it's I an, oh, I'm sorry. It has, it's a noun that means a fully enclosed, wholly or predominantly glass container for the indoor cultivation of moisture loving plants. Terrarium. Terrarium. T E R R. A R I U M, terrarium. That is correct. Hello, my name is Van Pallone, and I'm representing Cynthia Mann Elementary. And your word is lock. Lock. L-O-C-H. That is correct. Um. My name is Emma from Cambridge Junior High. And your word is unchristened. Unchristened. U-N-C-H-R-I-S-T-E-N-E-D. Unchristened. That is correct. Hello, my name is Titer Mao, and I am representing Challenger School. And your word is a froth. A froth. A F R O T H. A froth. That is correct. My name is Anne Marie Len, and I'm from Riverside Elementary. And your word is reprieve. Um, can I please have a definition? Sure, it's a noun meaning a respite or temporary escape, as from death, pain, or trouble. Reprieve. Reprieve. 
R E P R I E V E. That is correct. My name is Ella. I attend Highlands Elementary. And your word is thoroughbred. Can I have the definition? Yes, it's a noun meaning a horse of an English breed of light, speedy horses kept chiefly for racing and originating from crosses between English mares of, a cer of uncertain ancestry and Arabian stallions imported about the end of the 17th century. Can I have it in a sentence? Aviva's thoroughbred comes from a line of Kentucky Derby winners. Thoroughbred. T H O U R. O G H B R E D. Thoroughbred. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is T H O R O U G H B R E D. My name is Connor, and I'm representing Jefferson Elementary. And your word is tentativeness. Tentativeness. T-E-N-T-I-V-V-E-N-S-E. -E -E. Tentativeness. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is T-E-N-T-A-T-I-V-E-N-E-S-S. -E 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 My name is Saul Hernandez and I'm representing Kimberly Elementary. And your word is Caustic. Can I have the definition? It's an adjective meaning marked by or indicative of tart sharpness, specifically characterized by incisive wit. Caustic. Caustic. C O S T I C. Caustic. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is C-A-U-S-T-I-C, -C, caustic. My name is Tristan and I'm from Shadow Butte Elementary. Okay, this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word, bulbous. It's an adjective meaning resembling or suggesting a large rounded root, especially in roundness or in the enlargement of a part. Bulbous. Bulbous. B-U-L-B-O-U-S. Bulbous. That is correct. Hello, my name is Alexander Butler, and I'm representing Shadow Hills Elementary. And your word is cambio. Can you repeat the word? Cambio. Cambio. C-A-M-B-I-O. Cambio. That is correct. My name is Camden, and I attend Horizon Elementary School. Your word is lithophone. L 
What can you repeat the word first? Oh, yeah, for right. Us? Um, with a phone. L. I. T. H. O. P. H. O. N. E. With a thumb. That is correct. Hello, I'm Caitlin Stark, and I'm representing Snake River Academy. And your word is cayenne. Can I have the definition? Yes, it's a noun for a very hot and pungent powder made by drying and grinding the whole fruits or the seeds of several hot peppers. Cayenne. Could I have it in a sentence? Paolo's chili was too mild for his taste, so he sprinkled some cayenne on it. Can I have the language of origin? It's from a uh, French Guyana geographical name that was formed from a Tupi word, cayenne. Cayenne, C-A-I-A-N. N E, Cayenne. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Thank you. Cayenne. Okay. C A Y E N N E, Cayenne. This concludes round one of the Southwest Idaho Regional. Spelling bee. There are 22 spellers remaining. We are now ready to begin round two. Abigail? Okay, your word is specificity. Can I have the definition, please? Yes, it's a noun indicating the quality or state of being free from ambiguity. Specificity. Specificity. S P E C I F I C I T Y. Specificity. That is correct. Okay, this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Cantor. It's a noun meaning a synagogue of official who sings or chants liturgical music and leads the congregation in prayer. Cantor. Cantor. C A N T O R. Cantor. That is correct. Your word is perilous. Perilous? Yes, perilous. Perilous. P E R I L O U S. Perilous. That is correct. Okay, this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Surplus. It's a noun meaning the amount that remains when use or need is satisfied. Surplus. Surplus. S U R P L E S S. Surplus. 
I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is S-U-R-P-L-U-S, surplus. Okay, your word is griefful. Definition? It's an adjective meaning sorrowful or anguished. Griefful. Griefful. G R E I F F U L. Griefful. Sorry, that's incorrect. Griefful, G-R-I-E-F-F-U-L, griefful. Thank you. This word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Harrier. Can I have the definition? It's a noun meaning any of various slender hawks with long angled wings and long legs that hunt by flying low over the ground over open ground and usually nest on the ground. Harrier. Harrier. H A R R I E R. Harrier. That is correct. This word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Gambit. It's a noun meaning a, cal a calculated move, maneuver, or device. Gambit. Can I hear the word again? Gambit. Gambit. Yes. G-A-M-B-I-T. Gambit. That is correct. Okay, this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. The word is sprightliness. It's a noun meaning cheerful liveliness, vivacity, sprightliness. Could you repeat it one more time? Sprightliness. Sprightliness. S P R I T E L Y N E S S. Sprightliness. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Sprightliness. S P R I G H T L I N E S S. Sprightliness. The word is succulent. It's an adjective meaning full of juice or juicy. Succulent. Succulent. S-U-C-C-U-L-E-N-T. Succulent. That is correct. This word has a homonym, or could be confused with another word. The word is cairn. It's a noun meaning a rounded or pyramidal heap of stones made as a monument or memorial, or as a landmark or trail marker for explorers, surveyors, or hikers. Cairn. Please use it in a sentence. Modern hikers will commonly build a cairn as a landmark on the trail, a practice that has been in place since ancient times. Karen. 
C-A-I-R-N. Karen. That is correct. Disproportionate. It, Could you please repeat the word? Yes. Disproportionate. Can you use it in the sentence, please? Gordon thought the new mansion looked disproportionate next to the older ranch houses in his neighborhood. Disproportionate. Disproportionate. D I S P O R P O R T I O N A T E. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Okay. The spelling is D I S P R O P O R T I O N A T E. Disproportionate. Condensation. Condensation. C O N D E N S A T I O N. Condensation. That is correct. Word is nepotism. Nepotism. N E P O T I S M. Nepotism. That is correct. This one? Celebratory. Can you repeat that? <clears throat> yes. Celebratory. Celebratory. C E L E B R A T O R Y. Celebratory. That is correct. Word is untenable. Can you repeat that, please? Untenable. U N. Oh, can you repeat it to us before you spell it, please? Untenable. U N T A N N I B L E. Untenable. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Hi. The spelling is U N T E N A B L E. Untenable. This word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Anoint. It's a verb meaning to rub over with oil or an oily sub substance. Can you please repeat the word? Yes, anoint. Can you repeat uh, the word first yeah. before you? Anoint. A N. Can you? I'm sorry. Uh, a. Wait, what's the definition? 
Yeah, it's uh, to rub over with oil or an oily substance. Anoint. A M N O I N T. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A N O I N T. Anoint. This word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Escalator. It's a noun meaning a moving staircase. Escalator. Escalator. E-S-C-A-L-A-T-O-R. Escalator. That's correct. This word has a homonym, or could be confused with another word. Forfeit. It's a verb meaning to lose or lose the right to by some error, fault, offense, or crime. Forfeit. Forfeit. F-O-R-F-E-I-T. Forfeit. That is correct. Stampede. Stampede. Yes, stampede. S. Okay. Stampede. S T A M P E D E. That's correct. The word is marsupial. Can I get a definition? Yes, it's a noun meaning any of an order of mammals having a pouch for carrying their young and including kangaroos, wombats, bandicoots, and opossums. Marsupial. Marsupial. M-A-R-S-O-U-P-I-A-L. Marsupial. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is M-A-R-S-U-P-I-A-L. Propulsion. Propulsion. P R O P U L S I O N. Propulsion. That's correct. This word has a homonym, or could be confused with another word. Sardonic. Can I have a sentence, please? Yes. Um, actually, I need to give you the definition, too. It's an adjective, meaning expressive of or characterized by derision or scorn. And in terms of a, of a sample sentence, uh, revenge is mine, exclaimed Frank with a sardonic laugh. Sardonic. S. Can you repeat the word? Please? Oh, yeah, right. Um, sardonic. S A R D O N I 
C. Sardonic. That is correct. This concludes round two of the Southwest Regional Spelling Bee. We have 15 spellers left. Okay, we are ready to begin. Abigail, would you like to come on up? And just a reminder to repeat the word before you be begin spelling it for us. Okay, the word is analepsis. Can you please repeat it? Analepsis. Analepsis? Yes. Can I have the definition, please? Yes, it's a noun, meaning a description of an event or scene from an earlier time that interrupts a chronological narrative, a literary flashback, analepsis. Can I please have the country of origin? The word is originally from the Greek. Analepsis, A-N-A-L-E-P-S-I-S, -S. analepsis. That is correct. The word is holobenthic. Can you please repeat the word? Yes, holobenthic. Can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, both parts of this word are originally Greek, holobenthic. Can I please have the definition? It's an adjective meaning inhabiting the deep sea during all stages of life. Can you please repeat the word? Holobenthic. Holobenthic. H-O-L-L-O-B-E-N-T-H-I-C, holobenthic. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is H-O-L-O-B-E-N-T-H-I-C, holobenthic. Thank you. Uh, we should have, it should be June, speller number three. <laughs> The word is surreptitious. Surreptitious or surreptitious? Can you repeat the word? Surreptitious. Surreptitious. Would you like the definition? Yes, please. Okay. It's uh, an adjective meaning done, made, or acquired by stealth, secret, surreptitious. Surreptitious. S. Y R U P T I C I O U S. Surreptitious. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is S-U-R-R-E-P-T-I-T-I-O-U-S, -T surreptitious. Thank you. Apotheosis. Can you repeat that? Apotheosis. Can I have a definition? 
Yes, it's a noun meaning the raising of a person or thing to divine status, apotheosis. Apotheosis, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Apotheosis, A-P-O-T-H-H, -H. I'm sorry, E-O-S-I-S, -S, apotheosis. That is correct. The word is seraphic. Can I hear the word one more time? Seraphic. Seraphic? Yes. Can I have the definition, please? Of, it's an adjective, meaning of, relating to, or befitting one of an order of fiery six-winged angels who guard God's throne, sublime, pure, seraphic. Seraphic. Can I have it in a sentence? Yes. Um, the youth choir ended its concert with a seraphic chorale. Seraphic. S E R A. Oh, sorry, sorry. Seraphic. S E R A P H I C. Seraphic. That is correct. Genuflect. Can you repeat the word, please? Genuflect. 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 Genuflect? Yes. Genuflect. G E N U F L E C T. Genuflect. That is correct. The word is Moroccan. Please repeat that. Moroccan. Moroccan. M O R R O C A N. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is M O R O C C A N, Moroccan. Okay, this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Braille. Can you please say that again? Braille. Braille. Can you please use it in a sentence? Yes. Um, many books and magazines are printed in Braille for use by the visually impaired. Impaired. Braille. And I'm Braille. sorry, I need to give you the definition too since it's okay. got a hom homonym. Um, it's a noun meaning a system of writing for the blind that uses characters made up of raised dots in a six-dot cell arranged in two vertical columns. Braille. Braille. B-R-A-I-L-E. Braille. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is B-R-A-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. A quick question first. That so. I'm not going to ask this in the mic, but is it that the top is more Washington instead of just the top? I don't. I actually don't know that detail. 
Okay, so what is, what is my word? Your word is katakana. Katakana? Katakana. Katakana? Okay. Katakana. Wait, do capitals matter? No. Okay. Katakana. K-A-T-A-K-A-N-A. Katakana. That is correct. Okay, this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Glazier. It's a noun meaning one whose work is cutting and setting glass. Glazier. And there is an alternative pronunciation if you'd like to hear that. Uh, yes, please. An alternative pronunciation is Glazier, glazier, or glazier. Glazier, G L A Z I E R, glazier. That is correct. The word is vignette. Can I have the definition? Yes, it's a noun meaning a short literary sketch, chiefly descriptive and characterized, usually by wit and subtlety. Vignette. Vignette. V I N E T T E. Vignette. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is V I G N E T T E. Vignette. Asthmatic. 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 Okay, asthmatic. A S T H M A T I C. Asthmatic. That is correct. <laughs> the word is impasto. Um, can I please have its definition? Yes, it's a noun. And it means the thick application of a pigment to a canvas or panel in painting, impasto. Impasto? Yes, impasto. Impasto. I M P A S T O. That is correct. Okay, this word has a homonym, or could be confused with another word. Umami. It's a noun meaning a taste sensation that is meaty or savory and is produced by several amino acids and nucleotides as glutamate and aspartate. Umami. Umami. O O M A M I. Umami. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is U M A M I, U M A M I, umami.
Your word is furcula. Can I have a sentence, please? Yes. In birds, the clavicles are fused together to form the furcula. Furcula. Can I have a definition? It's a noun meaning wishbone. Okay. Furcula. Could you repeat that, please? Say, it one, say the word one more time. Furcula. Um, uh, let me let me repeat it again to make oh. sure you got it got it right the right word. Furcula. Okay, furcula. F e r k u l a. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is F u r c u l a. That concludes round three. We have eight spellers left. We'll begin again in about 30 seconds. Meningitis. Can you please repeat it? Meningitis. Beningitis? No, uh, meningitis. Meningitis? Can I please have the definition? Yes, it's a noun referring to a disease in which microorganisms cause inflammation of the membranes that envelop the brain and spinal cord. Meningitis. Can I please have the country of origin? Now, this word is originally Greek that passed into Latin. Meningitis, M-E-N. A-N-G-I-T-U-S, meningitis. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. M-E-N-I-N-G-I-T-I-S, meningitis. Okay, this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Anaphylaxis. Can I have the definition? The definition is it's a noun uh, that means hypersensitivity as to foreign proteins or drugs resulting from sensitization following prior contact with the causative agent. Anaphylaxis. Can I have it in a sentence? Uh-huh. Fortunately, there were no signs of anaphylaxis after Min was stung by a bee. Anaphylaxis. Are there any other pronunciations? Um, no, just the one. Anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis. A-N-A-P-H-Y L. A X I S anaphylaxis. That is correct. Okay, this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Lacustrin. I have the word one more time. Lacustrin. It's an adjective meaning growing or living in lakes. Lacustrin. Can I have the definition? Growing or living in lakes. Can I have it in a sentence? 
the Cornell Labs measured the pollution levels in lacustrine fishes. Lacustrine. Lacustrine. L A C U S T R O N. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Lacustrine, L A C U S T R I N E, Lacustrine. Okay, the word is apocryphal. Can you please it's, repeat the word? Yes, and I need to warn you this word has a homonym or could be confused with another word, apocryphal. It's an adjective meaning of doubtful authenticity, fictitious, spurious, or untrustworthy. Apocryphal. Apothraphal? Apocryphal. Apocryphal. Mm -hmm. Can I have it in a sentence, please? Yes. Campfire stories of the man who had a hook for a hand are widely dismissed as apocryphal. Apocryphal. Mm -hmm. A P. P R Wait, apocryphal? Mm -hmm. A P P O C R A F U L Apocryphal? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A P O C R Y P H A L apocryphal. Okay, the word is add some. Add some? Add some, yes. Add some. Country of origin? The word is from Latin. Okay. Add some. A D S U M. Add some. That is correct. Okay, your word is nival. Can you repeat that? Nival. Definition? It's an adjective meaning characterized by, abounding with, or living in or under snow. Nival. Can I have the language of origin? Yeah, the word is from Latin. Nival. N A I V A L. Nival. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is N I V A L. Nival. Okay, the word is chasuble. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yes. It could also be pronounced cha chasuble or chasuble. 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 
C H A S U B L E. Chasuble. That is correct. The word is pedurate. Can I please have a definition? Yes, it's a verb meaning to make worse or to depreciate. Depreciate. Pedurate. Pedurate. E D G E R A T E. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is P E J O R A T E. Pedurate. <laughs> That concludes this round. We have three spellers left. All right, we're re ready to begin the next round. Eliana? Okay, your word is charactonym. Can you repeat that? Charactonym. Can I have the definition? Yes, it's a noun meaning a name, especially for a fictional character that suggests a distinctive trait of the character. Charactonym. Can I have it in a sentence, please? Mm hmm. J.K. Rowling used the charactonym Remus Lupin in the Harry Potter series for a teacher who is also a werewolf because the word lupin means wolfish. Charactonym. Are there any other pronunciations? No, there are no alternate pronunciations. Charactonym. C-H-A-R-A-C-T U N U M I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is C H A R A C T O N Y M. Charactonym. Eliana, Eliana, don't go too far because if Got it. Okay, your word is commandantia. Commandantia? Mm hmm. Commandantia. May I have the country of origin, please? The word is from Latin derived Spanish. Okay. Could you use it in a sentence? Soldiers patrol, patrolled the streets to enforce the curfew in the Commandantia. Commandantia? Mm -hmm. Commandantia. C-O-M-M-O-N. Actually, any alternate pronunciations? Um, Commandantia is an alternate. Okay, Commandantia. C O M. M O N D A N T I A. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Commandantia is spelled C O M A N D A N C I A. Commandantia. 
Thank you for having me. It was a really good time. Well, don't go Stick too around. far because we have to wait. <laughs> don't go too far. Okay, your word is fastigium. Vestigium? Fastigium. Sorry. I need to drink a water. <laughs> fastigium? So it's fastigium. Fastigium, yes. Fastigium. Um, origin, please. This word is from Latin. Um, definition, please. It's a noun meaning the period at which the symptoms of a disease, as a febrile disease, are most pronounced. Festigium. F-E-S-T-I-G-I-U-M. Festigium. That's incorrect. So we have our three spellers. We have Eliana and Eli and Tiger. We'll move on to the next round. Since none of our spellers in that round spelled their words correctly, we will start a new round with you. So you may take your seat. Eliana. The word is glissade. Can you repeat that? Glissade. Can I have a definition? It's a verb meaning to make a controlled slide in a standing or sitting position without skis, toboggans, or other similar devices down a snow-covered slope. Glissade. Can I have it in a sentence? Even though, there was, even though there were less risky ways to get to the bottom, Maria decided to glissade down the mountain slope. Glissade. Are there any ulterior pronunciations? Yes. Another way to pronounce it is glissade. Glissade. G L E S S A D. Glissade. I'm sorry, that's incorrect, but remain on stage, please. The correct spelling is G L I S S A D E. Glissade. Okay, your word is, that's okay. Kaisaki. Kaisaki? Yes. Alternative pronunciations? No alternative pronunciations. Okay. Country of origin? This word is from Japanese. Kaisaki? Kaisaki. K A I. Kaisaki. K A I S A K I. Kaisaki. That's incorrect, but please remain on stage. Thank you. The correct spelling is K A I S E K I. Kaisaki. Okay, your word is brise or brise. Um, are there any other pronunciations? No alternative pronunciations. Um, origin? Um, brise is from Celtic derived French. Brise. Um, the definition, please? 
It's a noun meaning a movement in ballet in which the feet or legs are clicked together in the air. Brise. Brise. B R I Z E T. Brise. That's incorrect, but please remain on stage. That's B R I S E. Brise. All right, Eliana. Your word is oxyblepsia. Can you repeat that? Oxyblepsia. Can I have the definition, please? Yes, it's a noun meaning acuteness of sight. Oxyblepsia. Can you use it in a sentence? The fighter pilots were tested regularly to make sure they were maintaining their oxyblepsia. Oxyblepsia. O X Y B L E P S I A. Oxyblepsia. That is correct. Okay, your word is a dustiosis. A dustiosis? Yes. A D a dustiosis. A dustiosis. A D U S T I O S I S. That is correct. Okay, your word is. Eoline. Um, can you repeat the word? Eoline. Um, origin. Um, oh, yes. It's a word from Greek. It's a Greek name plus, oh, yeah. This word is from a Greek name plus an English combining form. And excuse me, I made a mistake. I was supposed to tell you that this word does have a homonym and and can can be confused with another word. I'm sorry about that. It's a noun meaning a mouth harmonica. Eoline. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No alternate pronunciations. Eoline. E Eoline. E, e say it say it again. Eoline. Eoline. E a line. E a line. Can you repeat the word again? Sure. E a line. E a line. E o l i n e. E a line. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A E O L I N E. E A L I N E. So we are now at the championship moment. Um, so if, if one of you misspells, please stay on the stage because the person who spells correctly will spell another word 
if they spell that second word incorrectly, then you'll be reinstated. All right, Eliana. Your word is caitiff. Can I have a definition? It's a noun meaning a base, despicable person, a mean and wicked person, caitiff. Can you use it in a sentence? The story centers on Batman's encounters with an enigmatic caitiff named the Riddler. Caitiff. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just caitiff. Caitiff. C-A-I-T-I-F-F. Caitiff. That is correct. Okay, your word has a homonym or could be confused with another word. Foraminate. It's an adjective meaning having small openings, perforations, or orifices. Perforated. Foraminate. May I have the homonym, please? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that in the rules that I'm allowed to ask for the homonym, or is it the homophone that I have to ask for? I'm confused. I thought I read in the rules somewhere that I thought okay. I read in the rules that I could ask for like a homonym. And it's, it's a homonym. Could be confused with I can say that? I think so. Okay. It doesn't give any information about. Um, it says it could be confused with ferruminate. Could you repeat the original word, please? That's ferruminate. Ferruminate? Mm hmm. F E R. O M I N A T E. That's incorrect, but please remain on stage. All right. The correct spelling is F O R A M I N A T E. Foraminate. Okay, your word is bocage. Can you repeat that? Bocage. Uh, can I have the definition? It's a noun meaning a supporting or and ornamental background as of shrubbery and flowers for a ceramic figure. Bocage. Can I have the word in a sentence? One of Marnie's favorite figurines in her mother's collection was a ceramic fawn lying in front of a charming green bocage. Bocage. B-O-C-A-G-E. Bocage. Congratulations, Eliana. <laughs> You're the 2023 Southwest Idaho Regional Spelling Bee Champion, and you will represent Boise State University at the 2023 Scripps National Spelling Bee. Congratulations. So Eliana Castro is your winner, everyone. So, let me ask you about the uh, first, what grade are you in? I'm in eighth grade. Eighth grade, okay, gotcha. And, uh, what, you know what, there we go, let's do this, that's better. Uh, what would you say is your favorite thing about spelling? Um, I don't really like anything in particular. <laughs> that's a fair answer right there, uh, I agree. Um, so this of course, an intense, an intense competition right here. What did you do exactly to study to get here and uh, win, win the regional? Um, I was very unprepared, I really started studying this week. So. 
Okay. okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to you. All right. And uh, uh, what what do you uh, what would you say is the most exciting thing looking forward going to Washington D.C. and representing uh, this area in Boise State University uh, later on? This is going to sound very shallow, but money. Okay. That's fair. I mean. <laughs> Okay, that's that's totally fine. I understand. All right, well, we've got some uh, exciting prizes to give you right now, I believe. Uh, you will be receiving from Merriam-Webster a one-year subscription to Merriam-Webster Unabridged. That's fun, I assume. Uh, from Encyclopedia Britannica, one-year membership to Britannica Online Premium. More words, there you go. And the Samuel Lewis Sugarman Award, a 2023 U.S. Mint Proof set donated by Mr. Jay Sugarman in honor of his father. That will be sent to you in June. So congratulations to our champion, Eliana Castro from South Hills Middle School. Any final words? We need Eli. Thank you for having me. It's congratulations.